Welcome back to another day, day 10, with the Meeple Champion. So, we've been going over a lot of new and different type of games, but I'm going to go into a smaller game today. And that game is Citadels. Citadels is definitely a much easier game than most. I think this is something that you can play with family that doesn't play a lot of games. This is something that, if you do have experienced friends that play the bigger games, they may not want to make a night about this. Although I do think that those kind of groups can enjoy it that way. But this is a great in-between game. You know, if you're getting together with people and you're playing a game day, this is a great game to say, all right, you know, we've got a group over here doing this game, we've got a group over here doing this game. You know, we're gonna we're gonna break and have our lunch when those games end, and then when we come back, we'll do a big game. Everybody gets together and plays this one, because it can play a, a pretty good amount of people. Now, the game isn't long. I would say 20, 30 minutes. Even if you get the full count of, of you know, eight people, you don't need to worry about this game taking an hour. This game's going to go fast. The only way it's going to do that is somebody is really having an analysis paralysis situation. And this game really doesn't bring that forward. This is not like other games where you have so many options that you don't know what to do. Now, the instructions, I think, are pretty straightforward. This is not a tough booklet. It's not a tough game. It's pretty easy to learn. There are a lot of pieces when it comes to who you can play as in the game. Now, if you had had the original game, you just had the nine people. I've got the bigger one here. This is the second edition that came with all the expansions. And so it has a lot of characters. Now, you aren't going to be playing with all of them. However, you're going to have a lot of options to be switching in and out. The idea being that you're going to have roughly nine people. So you usually get these little tiles you're going to put down representing, hey, here's my three, here's my four, here's my five, my two, my one, six, seven, eight, nine. Now, these are going to represent people that you chose from your larger cards. So your actual big deck of cards isn't that big. All that matters is that you shuffle up nine, those are the ones you're using, and then you have, depending on the amount of people playing, an X amount of them that are put to the side randomly, and then starting with the first player, they get to pick one and then pass the deck. And you do this, and now when it's the time where they go, okay, the character with the one goes, they reveal who they are, and they take their turn. You can affect only the people after you, but you don't know who you're affecting. That's the great thing, is that somebody can't be teamed up on just because they're doing so well. You can all assume who they are, and you can obviously claim that, hey, I didn't pick four, he didn't pick four, they didn't pick four, it must be the guy that we're after although you can't be sure that everybody's telling the truth. And you're not allowed to just show your card until it's time to show your card. So if one goes and says, I'm gonna affect three, well, when it's three's turn, they're gonna reveal their card, and then they're gonna be affected first by whatever that was that the person did. Your goal is to be gaining more and more money to spend to make more and more cards until you've made enough of these cards that you end the game. Just because somebody ends the game doesn't mean they win the game. Another one of those great mechanics, it's been used many times before, the idea of, yes, we can't finish until somebody has made, I believe it is five different cards. Once that happens, the game is over. That's the last round, we're finished. But that's not a winning condition, it's just the end of the game condition. You will get a little bonus for being the one that did it. I believe when you hit your five, you get two victory points. And then everybody after you that goes, if somebody is able to continue and finish and get their five as well, they get one victory point. You get a victory point for finishing and a victory point for being the first one to do it. So definitely a huge advantage getting those extra two. It's not easy to get victory points in this game. But that being said, there are a lot of cards in this deck. It's a little bit random as to what you're going to be dealing with but it's going to give you an opportunity to win from really any position. I love hidden role games. It's one of my favorite style of games. And I think the components in this game are great. The cards are top notch. The individual pieces here are all really well put together cardboard. There's not enough of this game to really have to have worried as the producer about not giving it their all on the pieces. 
you know, even the money. I mean, this is, it may look basic. You know, these are just little tan or something like that type pieces. But these are nice. They're unique. No, nothing I'd go out of my way to say, get this game for these. But it does look different. A lot of games, it's either the cardboard or the metal. And you tend to know, like, okay, it's cardboard. It's the same as 20 games I own. It's metal. It's the same as the five over here that have the advanced stuff. This one looks a little different. It's nice. So it's it's a nice component. I think that the game plays well. I think that it gives you a few avenues to victory. And I think it gives that opportunity for every time you play, it It has repetitiveness to it. It has repetitive to the point where you can play it multiple times in a night. I've taken this on vacations, sat down with family, and we end up playing four or five games in a row. It's great. You know, you can spend two hours on it and have a great time and then bring it back out the next day or bring it out the next week or forget about it for months and then all of a sudden go, oh, geez, let's play a game of Citadels and everybody's ready to go. It's a very easy game to learn. It's a very fun game to play. It, it really works for people of all levels. And, well, obviously below a certain age, it will be a little bit complicated. I think, you know, it doesn't get capped at that 10, which is kind of my, my number I normally go with. I'd say that kids as young as probably seven could play this game pretty easily. So, you know, the art is nice. Again, unique. I, I like the, you know, the cards are well, well drawn out. You know, these are these are nice designs. It doesn't, you know, pop off the page as an unbelievable art, but it's very nice. And that's all you're really looking for for most games. It's not expensive, you know, pretty easy to get. And, you know, I, I would highly recommend this for a lot of people. So definitely day 10, I'm telling everybody, give it a shot, try Citadels always like a game that can go over that four mark that five mark this one goes to eight and it plays fun at eight that's something that's important a lot of games that get past that four or five mark start to get drawn out you you hit 90 minutes and you're like okay that's a long game and then all of a sudden you go six seven eight players and you're like i'm sitting for two and a half hours not this game this game i don't care if you're playing with four you're playing with eight you're gonna be finished with this in 20 minutes maybe 30 but that's it. It's a great choice. It's not too expensive. It's still easy to get. You'll find this in most targets. You'll definitely find it in Barnes and Nobles. You'll find it on Amazon with ease. It's a fantastic game. So day 10, my game, Citadels, recommended by the Meeples Champion. See you tomorrow. Have a great night.